Hey there, welcome to the remote nurse community. If you're new here, you're probably just finding out now that nurses can work from home and that is true. There are lots of different types of remote nursing jobs that are out there and most of them you probably have never heard of. So I created the remote nurse community to kind of help you learn about, find and ultimately land a remote nursing job that works better with your lifestyle, your career goals and the whole nine yards. So my name is Sadie, I am a registered nurse. I have been working from home for several years now. And when I first heard you could work remotely as a nurse, I did not believe that. <laughs> I had never heard of that. And I was almost like personally offended that nobody had ever told me about that. Uh, so when I got home, I went onto Google and I just started searching for remote nursing jobs. Um, there wasn't a lot of information about them. There was just a lot of jobs. There was so many jobs and that was the good news. There were so many jobs, it was exciting. But the bad news was that there were so many jobs. Like <laughs> there was just too many jobs. I didn't know what I was looking at, all these different positions I had never heard of. I had no idea how I could do those positions. Um, so I went on a several month long expedition basically of trying to find a remote nursing job. I applied to many jobs and I got rejected for most jobs until I finally landed a job that worked really well for me and my background. And then ultimately it paved a way for a couple more remote nursing jobs that came in um, along the way. So I've held several different types of remote nursing jobs and I built this community just from the ground up. I made a Facebook group and I was just sharing out jobs that I found because I knew nurses didn't have this information. And now somehow I am an industry expert on remote nursing jobs. I don't know how that happened but here I am. <laughs> so this video is going to go over 10 tips for starting your remote nurse job, uh, job search. This is going to be a pretty critical element to watch before you start on this journey because it can be a turbulent ride. Um, it's, it's a lot of work and a lot of patience um, and a lot of learning. So if you can get these 10 tips before you start your job search, that will save you a lot of hassle um, that you might bump into, to be honest. So Let's start. Number one, I'm going to read my notes because I don't have the memory of a gazelle, but one, get familiar with what remote nursing jobs actually are. Remote nursing is not actually like a specialty. It's more of like a setting in which you do a specialty type job. So rather than thinking, oh, I'm going to apply to become a remote nurse, just more so think about the different job that you're going to do rather than the setting that you're going to do it. Um, so, because there are lots of different types of jobs in remote nursing. So one remote nurse may not do anything close to what the next remote nurse does. Um, it's kind of like being a bedside nurse or a clinic nurse, or there's lots of different types of bedside nurses, lots of different types of clinic nurses. So it's less, less so about the um, actual mode in which you do the job, but actually the job role itself is what you want to focus on. Number two, um, this is critical. Understand your motives as to why you're looking for a remote nursing job. Just make sure that you are not solely running away from something miserable and that you are actually running towards something that is going to advance you because this is not going to be a solution. This is not going to be an end all solution to like burnout or career dissatisfaction because a lot of these jobs are high stress, high production. And there's a lot of micromanagement even. So there can still be a lot of stress in these jobs. And sometimes it can be even worse because you're just completely alone at home. You don't really have like that outlet for other coworkers to like complain all day <laughs> stuff, even though that's terrible. I mean, we all like need that. But um, yeah, so remote nursing jobs aren't as glamorous as you might think they are. So it's good to make sure that you're not trying to just fill an empty void with something new. Um, because ultimately you're probably going to run into the same problems because it's a job. It has work requirements, production requirements. A lot of these jobs are still patient facing, even though you're on the phone with them, um, you're still dealing with them. So it's not always, you know, an end all to an underlying problem. So just make sure that you're not using remote nursing jobs as kind of a band aid to fill a gaping wound. <laughs> you might need therapy for that. I think we all need therapy these days. Um, one second. Number three, learn the different types of remote nursing jobs before you start your job search because 
there are too many to just go in blind. Uh, right now, I know of over 20 different types of remote nursing jobs that are out there. So it's a really good idea to get familiar with what's available and then pick maybe two to three job roles that you're really interested in and start going down the track of applying for those. Um, otherwise, you're just kind of like throwing your resume out into thin air. And it's kind of better to have a targeted, targeted approach to where you're looking for these jobs. Um, the way you can do this, you can go onto our free job board at the remote nurse.com slash jobs. And you can just start looking around at different job titles that are available. The most common ones are going to be case management, utilization management, telephone triage, um, and the like. But so that's one way. So you can go through those job listings and just like look at the job description and get familiar with all the different types. I also have a remote nursing jobs crash course, which is really a lot easier than that. It goes through 20 different types of remote nursing jobs and then also different uh, 20 different FAQs that I get about remote nursing. So that's a good one. The remote nurse.com slash services is where you could find that. Um, but yeah, definitely get familiar with the job roles and start targeting two to three core job roles that you're looking for. Number four, don't limit yourself by your physical location because remote jobs aren't so focused on your physical location, like on earth. <laughs> it's more about which state you are licensed to provide care for. So just because you live in like Chicago doesn't mean you need to look for remote jobs in Chicago. You probably just need to look for remote jobs in Illinois. Um, and if you are also, <laughs> it's complicated, which I go into that more in my crash course, but um, the non-compact states, you know, you kind of look at your, your individual state, which leads to the next point. If you have a nurse compact licensure or you're eligible to upgrade to a nurse compact license, definitely do that for remote jo jobs because that opens you up to any of the like 35 plus states that are part of the compact agreement. Um, and that really bodes well for remote nursing jobs because that means you can see more patients, which makes you more marketable to companies. Um, obviously, so and a lot of the companies do require a compact license just for that reason, since you can see so many more patients. Um, so if you're not sure if your state is part of the compact license, uh, go on to the nurse compact license website and, and just take a look at the states. Most of like the South and just go look at the, the website. And then um, if you are part of that, you can go on to your board of nursing website, wherever you go to renew your license, you can go on there to upgrade your license as well. Number six, understand the market and do not attach your self-worth to a skewed market because this market is really abnormal for nursing. Most of the time for nurses, we are used to being the, uh, the supply, you know, it's like supply and demand. We are the people that hospitals want. Well, in these remote nursing jobs, they kind of have more of that upper hand because these are so competitive and there's so many nurses who are wanting to work remotely that they don't, we are kind of at the disadvantage because there's so much competition. So do not be upset or um, shocked if you are applying to many jobs and you're not getting any answers. It's just the sheer competition and the numbers that are working against you. And it has really nothing to do with your skill set or your you know, self-worth or anything, really. It's just a numbers game, to be honest, like because some of these jobs get hundreds of applications per job and there's just no way that everyone's going to get those jobs. So um, that's one of the biggest shocks that people have when they are, you know, used to applying to like a couple hospitals in their area and getting three calls within a week. With these jobs, you might apply to 50, 100 jobs. You might not even hear from some, like most of them. And that's, Unfortunately, that's normal. That's not a reflection of you. It's a reflection of the market. So just know the market so that you are not um, set up for disappointment. Um, okay, so number seven, get familiar with job hunting in the digital age. Um, it's a lot different than what we are typically used to, again, with submitting your resume to a couple local hospitals. The recruiters probably see all those resumes that are submitted and maybe the managers see most of them too. Um, it's not like that with remote nursing jobs because there are, okay, one, there are so many different applications and uh, candidates that are applying that they usually will use like a resume robot scanner type software 
um, called the ATS, which goes through resumes digitally and tries to match them based on the job description. And they will screen them in or out before they ever really see a human being. Uh, so just be aware of that because that is directly related to how you need to format and edit your resume. So you need to make sure that your resume is ATS friendly, which means it is easy for a robot to read. You don't want something that's super fancy or trendy, which it looks beautiful, but a robot might not be able to read that. So, and that's what's gonna get you through to an actual human. Um, so skip the beautiful resumes and just go with your basic formatting. Um, and then also you need to tweak your resume for each job that you're applying to because again, these robots will scan for keywords that match the job description. And if you're not matching a lot of those words, you're probably not gonna rank as a good match. So if you do have some of the skills that they're describing in there, take those words and put them in your resume. You can't obviously lie and you can't add skills that you don't have. But this, the part of this is to go through and see which skills you do have and make sure you're communicating that in their language on your resume. So just understand that um, the robots are usually the checkpoint these days and you need to make sure you're working with that, not against that. Number eight, set an action plan and stay committed. Again, these jobs are really competitive. So you really are going to be looking at a several months long application, you know, rejections, all that. So just make sure you stay committed. Um, I would set a plan for like when you're gonna apply each week. Maybe you do it like Wednesday nights and Sunday nights, or you do a big batch of applications on Saturdays or something like that, just so that you have it kind of scheduled into your your routine and you're committed to doing that because the more applications you get out there, the higher your likelihood of getting an interview for at least one of those. Um, so definitely make an action plan and stay committed to it. Number nine, pull in extra resources. Um, sometimes you need to view a remote job as a long-term goal and start actually, instead of just applying to these jobs, start pulling in some education, some training, um, even some similar job roles in your local area, if you can get those for a couple years, then you will be much more marketable for remote jobs in the future. Um, so for example, like case management, a lot of remote case management jobs require you to be a case manager or have case management experience. One, because these jobs are largely like independent, you're alone. They, so they kind of would like you to know what you're doing already um, and not be adjusting to working remotely and a whole new you know, specialty area to learn. Um, that's not to say they don't hire new or uh, inexperienced nurses. They, some of them do. Um, but for the most part, a lot of them want or at least really look for those people with the experience. So if you can get that in your local community just for at least two to three years, that'll make you, your, your time getting a remote job much easier. Number 10, stay positive um, and know that truly the opportunity that's meant for you is going to come to you in its own time. Don't try to push things to happen that aren't happening because you're going to create a block that is going to block things that were meant for you to come that you're rejecting because you're so attached to what you think you need. So when I say that, it's kind of like, what are you talking about? But <laughs> You know, if you're trying so hard to fit into this box of like this remote job, I need this remote job, you are kind of setting up a block for other things that could come in, whether that be a different type of remote job or even just like an alternative um, nursing job in general, like not remote, like even just home health or like outpatient surgery or, or something like that, that could maybe present itself to you that you're not making time for or space for because you're so connected to one individual idea of what's going to make you happy. Um, there's a lot of things that could set, you know, check off the boxes of what you're looking for. You may not specifically be looking for a remote job. You might be looking for flexibility or time with your family or, you know, learning a certain specialty. So allow other opportunities to come in. And um, if, if this isn't always, if you know, if this isn't working for you over time. So those are my 10 tips. Um, I have a lot of resources at The Remote Nurse if you need them. You can go to theremotenurse.com that has everything there that you can find. Um, and then quickly I'll breeze through the main things I have. One, the job board, it's free theremotenurse.com slash jobs. You can find any types of jobs. There's two over 200 jobs at any given time usually 
that you can search for based on your clinical license, your states, your specialties, um, and kind of get a direct list of jobs that are open right now that are applicable to you. So that's helpful and that's free. Um, the second one is I have a weekly email that comes out on Fridays and it goes over all the different jobs that were published on the job board for that week. So that's a good way if you aren't going to be able to go into the job board every single day um, to get, you know, a passive email that comes to you that you can review all those jobs. Uh, okay. Number four, the free remote job seeker database. This is new. This is a kind of almost like an open application for, for companies to actually find you. So you can put in your clinical license, your state, your specialties, your job preferences. And I am working to market this to companies so that they can come in and you know specifically pick ideal candidates. Um, so that is free for you to enter a profile in there and hopefully a company eventually will stumble upon you. Okay, a couple more. The remote nurse membership. This is like a very uh, helpful part in remote nurse job hunting. Um, I do early access to all the jobs that I share onto the job board. So those get held private for the members for one week. And then after that, I do open it up to the job board. This is really helpful because there's so many different applications. They get hundreds again. So if you can get there, if you can get in the application pool early before it closes, which by the way, about 40 to 50% of the jobs do close before that week is up. Um, that is a really critical element to trying to get these jobs. If you can apply as soon as they post and before they get shut down. It also has a remote friendly or an ATS friendly resume starter kit. Um, and then my remote company database, which has about a thousand remote companies that hire nurses to work remotely. So you can also filter through that to find, you know, based on your license, your states, your specialties and find some companies that you can start stalking basically. Um, and then it also has like a little video library in there as well. And then the last one is my remote nursing jobs crash course that goes over two hours of, yeah, two hours of 20 different types of remote nursing jobs and 20 FAQ about remote nursing. And that's really helpful for a consolidated space to just find all this information now. Um, so that's good. I also am on Facebook, the remote nurse, Instagram at the remote nurse, LinkedIn, the remote nurse, and then our Facebook groups, remote nursing jobs and remote NP and PA jobs. So that was a mouthful and I hope that really helped you. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on social media or hello at the remote nurse.com and I will help you in any way I can and good luck in your job hunt.